my brother, Lord Stark. I want him back. He dreamt an old dream of three knights in white cloaks and a tower long fallen and Lyanna in a bed of blood. In the dream, his friends rode with him as they had in life. Proud Martin Cassell, Jory's father, faithful Theo Wall, Ethan Glover, who had been Brandon's squire, Sir Mark Risewell, soft of speech and gentle of heart, the Cranach man, Harlan Reed, Lord Dustin, on his great red stallion. Ned had known their faces as well as he knew his own once, but the years leech at a man's memories, even those he has vowed never to forget. In the dream they were only shadows, grey wraiths on horses made of mist. They were seven facing three, in the dream as it had been in life. Yet these were no ordinary three. They waited before the Ran Tower, the red mountains of dawn at their backs, their white cloaks billowing in the wind. And these were no shadows. Their faces burned clear even now. Sir Arthur Dane, the sword of the morning, had a sad smile on his lips. The hilt of the great sword dawn poked up over his right shoulder. Sir Oswald Went was on one knee, sharpening his blade with a whetstone. Across his white enameled helm, the black bat of his house spread its wings. Between them stood fierce old Sir Gerald Hightower, the White Bull, Lord Commander of the King's Guard. I looked for you on the trident, Ned said to them. We were not there, Sir Gerald answered. Woe to the usurper if we had been, said Sir Oswald. When King's Landing fell, Sir Jamie slew your king with a golden sword, and I wondered where you were. Far away, Sir Gerald said or Ares would yet sit on the Iron Throne, and our false brother would burn in seven hells. I came down on Storm's End to lift the siege, Ned told them, and the Lords Tyrell and Redwine dipped their banners and all their knights bent their knee to pledge us fealty. I was certain you would be among them. Our knees do not bend easily, said Sir Arthur Dane. Sir Willem Darry is fled to Dragonstone with your queen and Prince Viserys. I thought you might have sailed with him. Sir Willem is a good man and true, said Sir Oswald. But not of the King's Guard, Sir Gerard pointed out. The King's Guard does not flee. Then or now, said Sir Arthur, he donned his helm. We swore a vow, explained old Sir Gerald. Ned's wraiths moved up beside him with shadow swords in hand. They were seven against three. And now it begins, said Sir Arthur Dane, the sword of the morning. He unsheathed dawn and held it with both hands. The blade was pale as milk glass, alive with light. No, Ned said with sadness in his voice, now it ends. As they came together in a rush of steel and shadow, he could hear Leanna screaming, Eddard, she called. A storm of rose petals blew across a blood-streaked sky, as blue as the eyes of death. Lord Eddard, Leanna called out again. I promise, he whispered. Leah, I promise. Lord Eddard, a man echoed from the dark. Groaning, Eddard Stark opened his eyes. Moonlight streamed through the tall windows of the Tower of the Hand. Lord Eddard. A shadow stood over his bed. Your pardon, Your Grace. 